what is up guys in this video we're going to be talking about polynomial regression and how we can use that to better fit our data in case it is not looking like a linear regression chart and to get started i created this graph that's going to tell us a little bit about overfitting underfitting and the ideal line of the fit so let's get started with overfitting as you can see sometimes we can create a line that's going to fit the data too specifically which means we're going to end up with very inaccurate estimations because here we're just going to get the exact number at the exact point. And needless to say that in the future we will probably predict nothing that has to do with this data because the ideal line would be one that would go through all of these and take the average. And there's also the concept of underfitting where we don't really plot what's relevant to the data but we take a random average. As you can see right here, linear regression will not capture the data in the best form. What we need is something that's going to be more ideal, such as a curve that goes between all the data to actually estimate it in a better format. So that's the general concept of overfitting, underfitting, and what we actually want. So until now, what you have worked with is linear regression, which means we know how to make a line through data that looks linear. But what we're gonna be doing in this video is creating a line that curves through the data so we can better capture it. So let's close that and get started with a new empty project. And the first thing we're going to do inside here is import NumPy as MP. Then we want to import pandas as PD, import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT, and then from sklearn.metrics, we are going to import the mean absolute error and the R2 score. And for this example, we're going to create a function that predicts the sales during a certain time frame. So we're going to go ahead and create a predict sales function and it's going to take a parameter which is called time. So the first thing as always we're going to create some sample raw data which of course you can replace with your own data and inside here the first value we're going to give it or the first key is going to be the years key and for each year we're just going to do one two three four five six seven eight nine and 10, so we have 10 years to work with. Then we want to go ahead and create some sales. So the first year we sold 10, and then 30, and then 50, and then 60, then it went down to 50 for some reason, and 54, and then 67, 68, 80, and 100. So the reason I picked this numbers is because as you can see, the first three years it grew, and then it kind of slowed down and made a flat curve or even a negative curve, and then it continued to grow again. So this is just a potential scenario of where you can use polynomial regression. I'm sure there are better examples than this one, but I think for getting started, this is fine. So let's go ahead and create the data frame as always with this data, and it's going to be PD data frame. And inside here, we need to insert the raw data. Then we just need to convert this data to a list. So we're going to go ahead and create our X value as always. And that's going to be NP array. And inside here, we're going to refer to our data frame and the key value that we want. And we're going to change this to a list. And we're going to do the same thing for Y. So we're just going to duplicate that, change that to Y. And inside here, we need to change this to sales. Now to make sure that everything is working, we have to go ahead and print X and print Y. And this is supposed to be years, so let's go ahead and rerun this program. And you will notice that we will get these two lists printed out in this format. Next, we're going to go ahead and create the model, and that's going to be a NP poly 1D array. And inside here, we're going to insert NP polyfit, so this one right here, and it's going to take three parameters or three arguments, and the first one's going to be our x, the y, and the amount of curves we want. So it's actually important that you play around with this part because this is where you will probably deal with underfitting and overfitting of the data, but uh, we're going to finish this program. I'm going to change these numbers so you can see exactly what I mean by playing around with this degree. Now we're going to go ahead and create a y prediction, and that's going to equal the model at the estimate of the time. And then we need to create a Y prediction test, which is just going to tell us how good our model is. Then we want to print the prediction. So we're gonna type in prediction. And inside here, we will insert the Y prediction. Now let's go ahead and print the mean absolute error as always. So here we can go MAE comma mean absolute error. And that's gonna be of Y 
and the Y prediction test. And I'm not going to split the data for this one because it's a very simple example, but usually of course you'd want to split your testing data and your sample data so you can get proper tests. But for this example, it's absolutely fine. And we're gonna go ahead and do the R2 score and that's going to be an R2 score with the Y and the Y prediction test again. Now we can go ahead and actually test this. So right now we have these 10 values. Let's pretend we want to calculate what will happen at 5.5. And now if we go ahead and save, it should give us a prediction and the error rates of our test. So right now it says our model is 97% accurate based on the data that we have given it. It says we have a mean absolute error of three and the prediction is set at around 58. So if we go back to our chart, you'll notice that around 5.5, or I mean five is exactly set at 50, but due to the curve that we've created, it's going to give us an estimate of 58, which isn't that far off of what it would potentially be if you had lots of values. But let's go ahead and plot this data because right now it doesn't really make much sense unless we plot it. So the first thing we have to do is create this curvy line and I'm just gonna call it curvy line because I think it's very easy to understand if we write that. And it's going to be a lin space and the first two arguments is going to be the frame of time between the start and the end. So we want to start from year one and end at year 10. And the third argument is how many lines do you want in the curve? So if you only provide one, it's going to be a single line. If you put three, it's going to be three lines. And the more lines you put, the more smooth the curve is going to look. You can also get away with only writing 10, but it's going to look very chunky. But under that, we can go ahead and create plt.scatter and we're going to insert X and Y, then we have to go plt.plot, and we want to plot this curvy line and also the model of this curvy line. Now we can go ahead and show this chart. And finally, if we go ahead and run the program, you're going to notice it's going to give us this chart with a curvy line. And as you can see the data down here that went a bit down during the middle years, was taken into account, so it was averaged out and created a pretty fine prediction. Now, let's go ahead and play around with the degree. As I told you earlier, if you go ahead and just insert one to the degree, you're going to notice that we're going to end up with a linear model, which means we won't be able to accurately count these dots over here. And there are much better examples than this one. As I mentioned earlier, sometimes there's a curve that goes down and up, which might be much better suited with a polynomial regression because this also looks like you could get away with using linear regression. But what I was trying to say earlier is if you add some more degrees, you'll be able to find the curve and fit it perfectly. So as you can see also with five, we have a double curve. And the problem is if you actually insert too many of these, you're going to end up with overfitting which means you're gonna get something like this that fits it more or less, except this part right here, but the predictions are absolutely awful. And I think it also does the same thing if you do it at 12. As you can see, this is not a good model and this is an example of overfitting because it only knows how to follow the data, which means Essentially, it's not any better than you tracing these dots with a line, but I think three was perfect for that. And earlier I was talking about this number over here. So let me just show you what happens when you change that to five, for example. You'll notice it becomes a bit more chunky, but I believe the result is the same because this is only used to display the values. So it doesn't really matter what you put here. But I think visually it looks a lot more appealing when you have a higher number such as a hundred or a thousand. It just looks a lot more smooth. Of course, this might also lead to longer rendering times. So definitely play around with that if you have larger data. And with that being said, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video.